Imagine finding a bird with a damaged wing or a distressed koala, or maybe a blue tongue damaged in some way. What would you do? Most people these days know about wires, the wildlife rescue people, and would simply give them a call to sort out the problem. But who are they, really? And could you become a wires rescuer? Well, indeed you could. Wires relies on volunteers who see value in caring for animals with problems and who are prepared to devote their free time to this cause. We look at the Wires way of doing things and came up with a video that we hope will inspire you. So this is just a common eastern blue tongue lizard. Well, as you can see, the tip of his nose has, has gone, which, which is a bit of damage that he might have incurred from a fight with another animal or um, an attack from another animal. He was also being attacked by birds at the time. And he, although that looks like quite a, a nasty piece of damage, blue tongue lizards are really tough animals. Okay. Yeah, my role um, yeah. in wires is I'm a volunteer reptile handling trainer. Right. So um, reptiles obviously make up a significant portion of the Australian native fauna yeah. and um, they, they also have a really, really critical role to play in the environment. And what types of animals uh, get rescued usually? Just... Such a huge range. We have everything from eastern brown snakes to um, turtles to possums to big red kangaroos. So, Volunteers play so many roles. We we couldn't exist without our volunteers. They are the rescuers, the carers. They do a lot of our accounts and administration. They help fundraise. They help educate. They help at market stalls. They really do everything. We have a, a huge portion of Wise volunteers are made up of semi-retired and retired people, and we really couldn't do what we do without them because some of these animals take. Um, really need full-time care that's 24 hours a day and that's something that people that work full-time just can't provide. They receive training when they first start that's about the immediate care and rescue response of an animal and then if they're interested they can continue on learning and developing their skills. We have lots of specialised training um, with the, within the different species groups. Okay, Look, I, I grew up in the bush and uh, I've always liked the bush and the animals in it, so I was quite happy to, to do it. We are lucky in this country, we have some of the most amazing animals in the world. There's nothing quite like these guys and a lot of the other animals that we have too, they're very unique. Okay. We've got nothing else like them around the world. And look at things like the platypus and the echidna. Yeah. They had to make up a whole new class of animals when they found them in the monotremes. So you mentioned um, wires operating in, in uh, regional areas. Can you mm -hmm. say something about that? Absolutely. So it's about a 50-50 split between the city areas and regional areas um, when we're talking about calls that we receive. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge amount of work that needs to be done regionally. There's a lot of space out there. There's a lot of wildlife in regional areas. Mm -hmm. So we really need people in, in towns all over New South Wales. We get a lot bigger animals in the country, we get larger kangaroos, we get larger birds of prey. So we definitely need a skill base and volunteers in, in all the regional areas. Okay, excellent. So what sort of things are involved in caring for an injured reptile? Well, generally reptiles um, are, are significantly different than, than mammals in that they don't thermoregulate in the same way as, as as mammals do. Given that, they don't need to eat anywhere near as much food as we do, so, okay. but, but we do need to provide them with an external source of, of heat. Right. Okay. So there's, so there's a couple of different right. Um, right. Yeah. things, you know, sort of diet is very, yeah. is, is much less than you would be feeding a, a mammal of similar body mass. Mm -hmm. And obviously, yeah, we, we provide them with an external source of heat to help them metabolize and, mm. and uh, digest their food. I think I've been a volunteer for about 11 years, but I've kind of lost track. I can't right. quite remember. <laughs> okay. Feels like um, my lifetime. Yeah. It seems like you've got many different types of birds here. Um, mm -hmm. How many at the moment? You roughly any idea of how many you've... I think it's about 30. That obviously demonstrates an incredible commitment to uh, sure. avian wildlife. Mm -hmm. um, when, when can you assess that they can be released in, back into the wild? So they have to be healthy, they have to be able to feed themselves on their natural food, mm. um, they need to be able to fly, 
um, mm -hmm. they need to be able to interact with their own species. So um, we is that easy to assess if they can do all that? Ah, uh, yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you, you need to move them from like chicks go start so off in an incubator or a hospital the box, and then they move into larger cages when they're self feeding, mm -hmm. and then they go ideally into an aviary that's big enough for them to fly and build up their flight muscles and interact with other birds of the same species. From touring your aviary, mm -hmm. um, it looks pretty full time. It was that be right? It's very um... Um, at the moment. It's spring, and we have lots of baby birds, mm -hmm. and that's our peak time. Mm -hmm. um, it does quieten off in winter. I can't say that there's ever been a time where I haven't had something in care, but in winter I might only have two or three birds as opposed to thirty. Do you assess whether an animal needs to go to a vet? Are you are you trained enough to be able to do that? Look, um, if there's nothing really obviously wrong with the animal, sometimes we'll just let it sit for an hour to then calm down. But a lot of times, it's, you really have to take the animals to an expert right. because we're not experts. Yeah. You know, okay. Do these these guys a lot, but we are not vets, yeah. and so um, and there's obviously things that we can't see. We can't see internally what's happening with right. animals. Yeah, so of course. X-rays and ultrasounds are important. Um, yeah, this one is simply doing well apparently has improved a lot so we have to re retest it basically today this is the idea and he's been bellowing for the last two weeks oh. Let me say something. Being in Italy, I'm very surprised that you can call a girl with those sounds. In Italy, in Italy it normally use white wine. <laughs> Works better. <laughs> Good. Um, and do the volunteers need special equipment, like cages? Or... No, no, we provide a lot of that to our carers. Um, of course, they can invest in enclosures and cages and equipment if they'd like, but a lot of it is provided by wires. Right. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of apartments in Sydney. If people live yes. in an apartment, can they help wires? As well? Absolutely they can. Um, it comes back to all the different animals that we rescue. So if you do want to care and you're in an apartment, you can care for the smaller species. Reptiles are great to keep in an apartment. Um, or you can help us just by rescuing and not caring if that's not Okay. Oh, there's, there's two parts to it. There's rescuing yeah. and caring. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So right. you can just choose to rescue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then if you are in a situation where you are renting and your landlord doesn't allow you to have animals in the house, you can just rescue. Yeah. And what kind of time commitment do volunteers need to make? It's totally up to them. So you can be as active or as inactive as, as you would like. You can do one rescue a month and that can just be a simple drop off or pick up from the vet or you can be a 24 hour carer. Great, okay. Uh, in spring we have an awful lot of calls, thousands of calls in fact, about baby birds yeah. and a lot of them just need to be reunited with their parents. We can often make a little fake nest and put it up in the tree and reunite them so they never need to come into care. Okay, cool. Yeah. Excellent. To be a wise volunteer you really do have to love animals um, we've seen the dedication of the guy looking after a koala uh, from nurturing it back to health after many weeks but also the the longer you've been volunteering the the depth of knowledge is evident especially with our, our reptiles man he was um, he couldn't believe uh, how, how interesting the world of Australian reptiles is so if you care about Australian fauna, then give wires serious consideration. Mm -hmm.